Okur is the most northern community in Yukon, home of the Vantakuchin. Our people lived here for thousands of years. They covered the air area around the Arctic Circle. From NWT, Yukon, and Alaska, they mostly survived on caribou, moose, fish, and small game. Today, modern conveniences from the South supply this remote area by plane. Okro has a population of 300. The culture and traditions are alive and well. Special events today are exciting times like Canada Day and Caribou Days. During the hot summer months in this part of the world, they have sun 24-7. Traditional sewing, fiddling, and jigging is a favorite pastime. A school health service and RCMP help maintain solidity and a healthy lifestyle. Fantakwuchin First Nation is the First Nation government settled in 1993. They manage the upkeep of the community, sewage, water, garbage, housing, and the community maintenance. The elders are well respected and taken care of by family. Okro has a strong sense of environmental preservation of their land, lands. My parents, they, they charred a lot of fish and meat and stuff. Not for all winter. Everything was charred. We charred fish. Like when we look at nets, we, we could char all our fish for winter. We had to. So that's something people should look at if there was a hard time. This is Northern Yukon Okro, my homeland, a place of my ancestors, a place where my people have lived for thousands of years. Our people lived off this land by eating traditional food that we gathered during harvest time. Food security has always been a priority in the past. In the past, we would move with the animals seasonally to survive. Today, food security is a problem with modern machinery. We get goods and fresh food from the south by a plane. Today, we have food for a month from our local food store. If no plane was to come, do we continue or do we change? Survival of our people is a must. Think about it. Did you notice in the past 10 years extreme environmental changes? Food security has always been a priority and survival of our people, the Guichin. They stored food for seasons every four months. Today, food security is supplied through a northern store via airplane. We have food for a month. Ask yourself, what would happen if the play never came one day? In the past, our elders said, don't forget your culture. Hard times are coming. What did they mean? Did you know that the First Nations calendar in South America, the Mayans, after 13,000 years ended on December 21st, 2012? They called it the Dark Rift. Scientists study solar flares of the sun, and they expect high solar flares every 10 years. 2012 is the next time. 
They have expressed concern on the internet that this time the solar flares will be unusually high, which could fry our satellites, our technological communications of the planet. Electrical engineers also say this could burn out all our transformers for electricity to our homes. Also, astrologers discovered a planet coming into our solar system in 1983, and NASA has confirmed it. They call it Eris. Others call it Nibiru. It is expected to pass between Mars and Jupiter, and will circle around the sun in 2012. This happens only every 3,657 years. This could cause an asteroid shower of catastrophic proportions when this planet passes by. Are you ready for this? Food and shelter and water is food security to our survival. Is this what our elders meant? Hard times are coming. Should we get ready for the unexpected?